Hello YouTube. As we explore the outer space, we will encounter challenges we can hardly imagine now. Let me present two interesting European perspectives on such challenges. Some experts now say that those who want to explore Mars and other planets in the solar system are likely going to face food troubles and that and that might just turn them into cannibals. Charles Kokel, professor of astrobiology at the Edinburgh University, recently spoke about the challenges astronauts will face if and when human attempts to colonize places such as Jupiter's moon Callisto and Saturn's moon Titan come into fruition. Specifically, Cockle stressed that if the farming and crop systems failed, the colonizers would likely face very dire consequences unless they received, unless they received regular supplies from Earth. If they are far away enough, or if our planet collapses completely, this might not be possible. While this might seem like a fairly bleak prediction, Cockle's message actually serves more as a warning. The crop systems would need to be tested and refined on plan places like the Moon and Mars before colonizers are weird off, so to say, into the far reaches of the space. Only after adequate testing can, be, can we be certain that colonizers will not have to engage in cannibalism in order to survive. But there's another perspective, perspective, and I learned about it from the article presented by that young, bright Russian scientist who graduated from the Russian Military Space Academy and was engaged in different classified, I assume, and also open space exploration projects. Imagine that you are sleeping on a bed that is actually a mushroom and accidentally fall to the floor in your dream, which is also a mushroom, that floor. When you wake up, you pour a glass of water, which is also made of mushrooms. You drink the water and go back to bed. Along the way, dropping a chair consisting entirely of the body of a live mushroom. Your whole house is also made of mushroom. Yes, there is a house. And this whole godforsaken town is all made up of living and dead mushrooms. They are constantly growing and dying, and their spores are flying through the streets. In other words, mushrooms will save this world. A similar picture is presented in a new scientific article. It contains studies by a group of European scientists who study the potential of mushrooms as raw materials for some environmentally friendly monolithic structures, which according to the researchers are capable of, rev of revolutionizing our ideas about the human environment and our economy. We propose to develop a new structural substrata using a living mycelium, the body of the fungus, the document says. Fungal buildings will be able to grow, build and repair themselves on their own. This voiced idea is a response to the danger of catastrophic climate change. A new theory says that growing building materials from biological raw materials will make the construction of various structures less dependent on fossil fuels. And besides, their production will be environmentally friendly. Fungal materials can have a very wide range of mechanical properties, from foamy to wood polymer. Um, according to Han Voisten, uh, I believe that's the pronunciation. He's a microbiologist at the Utrecht University. That's in, in the Netherlands. 
And in that country you can eat some mushrooms that are banned in other countries of the world. Wurstin is a co-author of the new article. The fact that we can produce such materials means that we can use them for construction. And not only that, the construction of various useful objects from mushrooms is not a new idea. Other research groups have also considered the possibility of growing building materials from fungal mycelium. NASA, for example, is currently testing whether mushrooms can grow on Mars, right there in its reddish soil. If the result is positive, then we will get a relatively inexpensive way to create places suitable for human habitation directly on the Red Planet. This will significantly reduce the cost of missions that will work on Mars in the future. However, all these projects involve the destruction of the fungus after it has grown, because in this case the mushroom as a building material is more durable, and it can even be used as a material for load-bearing structures or fences. But until now, no one has investigated the possibility of building monolithic structures from a live mushroom. Andrew Adamaki a scientist at the University of the West um, England, who is also a co-author of the article, he said that the team is working on creating fungal versions of neuro neuromorphic circuits and other electronics. He acknowledged that conventional wires are cheaper and easier to work with. However, he added that living chains will be self-developing, self-assembled and self-healing. What no traditional scheme right now can do. This is a really difficult task, but we have a real opportunity to study how buildings can grow, repair themselves and adapt to external conditions. They will be able to work with local resources and form whole rooms just standing still. This will minimize logistics and energy use in the production of building materials, according to Phil Ayers, um, another co-author of that article. The Russian scientist added this, In general, my friends, mushrooms are our everything, and someday on Mars we will be sitting under a huge fly agarics and dreamily look at the night sky, where a small green dot will glow brightly. And here is what I want to add. Noon, 22nd century, is a 1961 science fiction book by Arkadian Boris Strugatsky. I think the best, in many ways, Soviet science fiction writers. Uh, in league with Ivan Efremov, but different. Well, anyway, anyway, they expanded it in 1962 and then in 1967. It was translated into English in 1978. It relates several stories of the 22nd century, while providing the background feeling for the style of life uh, which gave birth to the so-called Noon Universe. One such story is titled The Planet with All the Conveniences. When terrestrial astronauts explore the planet Leonida and make a brief contact with the Leoniders. Arkady and Boris, Boris Strugatsky in that book gradually lead the reader to an idea that uh, will continue to dominate their work. Human contact with another civilization is most likely impossible. It is impossible for a number of reasons. First of all, because most likely people will differ too much from their neighbors in the universe. And in that story about Leonida, we see people who landed on an unknown planet and did not even managed to make contact with the local civilization because they turned out to be too different from us. The inhabitants of Leonida developed a biological civilization, no machines whatsoever, but they had living wells produ which produced uh, uh, edible products honey producing huge animals that also produce edible meat that is what their bodies are actually 
no mosquitoes or detrimental insects I'm sure no viruses too their transportation is a flight aboard gigantic birds basically it's all about selection genetics and uh, training of animals one terrestrial protagonist asks which civilization is on a higher level human civilization or their civilization ever since I read that book in my youth I keep wondering what if we developed a, bio a biological civilization it looks like some steps are being taken now so I'll keep my eyes open I really like the stuff and uh, I believe in the exploration of outer space as long as we learn how to protect bodies of humans who venture into outer space and I mentioned it in my other uh, videos what has impacted the psyche and the physiology of those humans so thank you for the support um, of those that do and uh, if you can support my research you'll find it in the links to the in the description uh, to this video and um, if you can please subscribe to my channel and tell others thank you